How you feel? Uh, loose. Cool. Let's get loose. All right. Hey, all you Firebase developers. I'm Jen Person. Welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. Today, I am joined by John Mensing. Specifically, the reason I wanted to have you on today is because recently we made a big announcement, right? About uh, Google Cloud Messaging. Uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging, which is the product I work on, uh, Firebase Cloud Messaging is the new version of Google Cloud Messaging and does everything that Google Cloud Messaging does and more. Right. And so in order to focus more attention and resources on Firebase Cloud Messaging, we have deprecated Google Cloud Messaging, and everyone needs to move over to FCM, that's Firebase Cloud Messaging, uh, over the next year. Certainly, uh, once we made the announcement, there were some pretty common questions that we saw, and we're going to look at a few of those today. This next question comes to us from Timo. Uh, it says, I was emailed regarding the GCM FCM migration. Not sure if this applies to my topics iOS notifications. How do I tell? Uh, yeah, that's an awesome question because I'm sure a lot of you out there got that email and you're thinking, I don't remember signing up for GCM. Uh, well, because uh, GCM was so frequently used with Firebase in the past, it would be enabled automatically when setting up a Firebase project. So that means that if you had a Firebase project, uh, you probably got this email about GCM. Um, it was much more challenging to try to tell who's still actively sending messages with it because you could have an app where it could go a month without sending a message and we didn't want those people to be missed. So how do you tell if this applies to you? Um, there are a couple different things you want to look for. So in your client app, uh, if it's an iOS app, take a look at your pod file. Are you using the, the uh, Google Cloud Messaging uh, pod in your pod file or are you using uh, Firebase slash messaging? Um, if you're using Firebase slash messaging, uh, your client is not using GCM and you don't have to worry about it. In terms of Android, if you're using any of the uh, GCM related uh, Gradle dependencies, that would be using GCM. If they say Firebase, again, you're not using it in your Android client app. And then if you take a look at your server side, um, if you're using the GCM endpoint, then yes, that's GCM. But if it's FCM endpoint, again, you're not using Google Cloud Messaging. Yeah, so to summarize, if you see Google Cloud Messaging or GCM somewhere, odds are that's something that you're going to want to uh, look at a little bit uh, further and make sure that you're uh, upgrading that to the Firebase Cloud Messaging. Right, and if you're still not sure, uh, check out the migration guides. We'll link those below so you can see, you can really compare side by side. Is this some code that I have in my app? Yes, no. Do I need to change it? Mm -hmm. You ready for another? I am. Let's do it. All right, let's do it. So, Sandra wants to know, is there any way to clear or reset pending FCM messages or to group pending messages on iOS like Android can with the tag property? Effectively, he's talking about collapsing messages. If you send one notification, um, is it going to replace the other one or are they just going to get bombarded with a whole bunch of them? Right, so there's no way to clear or reset a message that goes over FCM to an iOS device, but you can collapse messages together so only the most recent message will be displayed. And you can do that by using the APNS collapse ID. I think that's the name of the parameter. Uh, so check out the APNS documentation on Apple's site. That's going to tell you everything you need to know about how this works. And all of those options work over FCM because FCM delivers all of the APNS functionality with a couple of benefits that uh, we love to talk about. So when it came to the GCM deprecation, we sort of compiled some frequently asked questions that we have from our developers, and maybe we should just talk about some of those here as well. I think we should. Cool. Um, one very important question is, what is going to happen to my customers who haven't updated to the latest version of the app yet? Are they going to stop receiving messages? Well, the short answer is no. Uh, anyone who has an existing GCM token will still be reachable through the FCM APIs. And those tokens, the GCM tokens and the FCM tokens, are basically the same thing. And they're mutually interchangeable. So if a user has a GCM token, you can send to that token just as easily as you can send to an FCM token. No problem. Uh, so in that upgrade window, as people are moving from GCM to FCM, you'll still be able to reach your GCM users throughout and indefinitely, really. Right. Similarly, uh, if you wanted to just update the client code for now and then deal with the server later or vice versa, because they're the same tokens, you don't have to change everything at once. 
Yeah, that's important to understand. And it's also nice to know that uh, at no point will you lose the ability to contact your users because we all know that's really the whole point of GCM and FCM. Should I just put my GCM and FCM code into the same app just to be absolutely sure that that person's going to get a message? Because I'm afraid that when I'm in the upgrade process, it might not work. Well, I think that's generally frowned upon. Yes. Yes. I think it's a really bad idea, actually. Uh, and it might not seem like a bad idea, but why, why you run into problems with that is the GCM SDK is trying to manage tokens, request tokens from GCM. Meanwhile, the FCM SDK is trying to do exactly the same thing. It's trying to get tokens. And because these tokens are interchangeable, uh, you can end up into a situation where you think you've got the most recent token, but in reality, um, you've got the wrong token. Or maybe you've got two, of, two tokens for the same user, and so when you try to send to that user, you end up sending two messages by accident. So there's a couple of different bad situations that can arise if you try to put both of these into the same app at the same time. So you really just shouldn't do that. Right. So when it comes to the migration process, uh, you, you may not have to migrate the client and the server at the same time, but within a client, you, you are going to want to do that one all at once. You don't want to have mixes of GCM and FCM code in there. That's right. Should we talk a little bit about privacy? Sure. OK. One thing that's very important for us to tell developers is when they have questions about, OK, what kind of information, once I migrate, what is Firebase collecting, and what control do I have over that information? Well, uh, all of the data that's collected by Firebase is specified in our um, terms of service, as well as in our data sharing uh, documentation, which you can find online. We'll post a link. Hello. Uh, and you have all kinds of control over this. So when it came to the announcement, you know, we talked about reaching out if you have any questions. So make sure you're still doing that. Um, you can reach out to me on Twitter. You can reach out to support. And uh, we'll link to that as well. Uh, just make sure you're letting us know how your experience is going. Um, if you've already migrated, I want to hear how it went. Thank you so much for watching another episode of Ask Firebase. And remember, if you have questions, uh, to tag them on social media with the hashtag Ask Firebase. And who knows? Maybe you'll see it on a future episode. And be sure to subscribe to the Firebase channel so you can check out Ask Firebase and other great uh, content such as uh, Firecasts and Meet Firebase and all sorts of cool special things going on. And thank you so much to John for coming on the show and helping me uh, answer people's questions. It was my pleasure. All right. See you next time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think we got good stuff.